will be in footage. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to September. That's right. Vacation's yeah. over. Although the, the people in Europe had vacation like two weeks ago. Vacation's yeah. over. It is officially not summertime. So that means that, you know, real work's about to happen. So let's get some housekeeping out of the way. We're going to bring our guest on today. We're going to talk a little shop. You know, there's always something happening in IT land. And over the weekend, more stuff seems to have come out that have happened. Uh, so we'll talk about that. But before we get too deep, here we go. MSPinitiative.com. This is where you find all information about us and this podcast and everything else that we're doing. So under sessions, you'll see this session and every other session and podcast and video format. So, you know, whichever works best for you. Stay tuned for announcement about giveaways that will run between now and the end of the year with, you know, the sponsors that'll be pitching in on that. Um, then here are the cool things that are happening between now and the end of the year. You can download this podcast afterwards. So, or you could write them down. It's up to you. First, if you're headed to Datocon, that's right. In six days from now in Washington, DC, after two years of hiatus, here we come back to Datacon 2022. And I'm sure everybody and their mother and their cousins and their brothers and their sisters want to understand what's happening with Data post acquisition of Kaseya. And yes, Fred will be there. So we'll have to hear what the plan is, maybe. But if you're headed to Datacon or you just happen to be in the Mid Atlantic or Northeast area and willing to jump in a car and hang out with your channel and IT friends, meet us at the Nationals ballpark, right? The Major League Baseball Stadium, <laughs> excuse me, that the Washington Nationals play in. Yes, you do, don't have to be a fan, uh, but we rented out the stadium. You're going to be able to come out and hang out with, you know, other folks in the industry, uh, both vendors and, you know, fellow MSPs in the trench. And we got a bunch of stuff uh, for you to do, and you can register here. And if you're an MSP, we'd love for you to join us. If you're at the conference, Datocon, it is actually on the official schedule. So if you go to Datocon's website under agenda and on Monday night, you will find on the 12th, the very last thing that's happening is the MSP Community Block Party. That's what we're talking about. So definitely come out and join. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about is the MSP Community Boat Party. So if you happen to be in Fort Lauderdale, area and can join us because you're, you know, able to jump on board anyway, or you're headed to the Taylor Business Group Big Big Conference at the Diplomat, which is the scene of the very, very last Autotask Community Live uh, for people that were there in 2017 and remember it well, or maybe have some fogginess around it. That's where it was. You can definitely join us and we will be doing a mega yacht party down the intercoastal. So if you go ahead and look at the agenda, uh, kind of the kickoff to the conference that night. Here it is. Uh, and if you're an MSP and you're going to the conference, you're invited already. Uh, otherwise, if you're in the area, let us know. Lastly, uh, or second to last, maybe, uh, is we'll be doing our final block party in Orlando on September, or September, on November 9th. Everybody probably knows what's happening around then. And if you're a fan of the All-American Rejects, we are flying them in for a private concert just for you. So uh, definitely jump, you know, if you're in that area, you're in Florida area, or you're headed to a conference that week, let us know, throw your hand, hand up, and we will make sure to get you to our big block party at the end of the year. And the last thing we want to tell you about, second to last thing, at, um, on the tail end of Datocon in Chicago, another conference called TechCon Unplugged. We had Paco and company on earlier on a podcast, and uh, this is a pretty cool little event. Uh, actually in Chicago. So if you're in that area, it's a pretty cool agenda. Uh, a bunch of good people here. Uh, this is the photo from last year, but definitely check out TechCon Unplugged. And then at the very last that we're going to announce, again, if you've been following us, you know about this, the Channel Strong Tour. There's three tours left this year. Um, there's week six, seven, and eight on the out of eight. Um, so if you're in Denver, Tulsa, Topeka, St. Louis, or Vegas, Phoenix, Temecula, Irvine, or Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, Orlando, Atlanta, we are coming to you. So go to channelstrongtour.com, check it out. If you're an MSP, throw your hand up. We'd love to invite you out. Okay. 
<coughs> Those are all that of my announcements. A, a bunch of announcements. A lot of stuff going on. That was How a lot. Know? I went to exactly. Topeka. I'm good. Have you been to Topeka before? I have never been to Topeka before. I drove there by accident one time. Really? Was there a lot of corn? Uh, yeah, there's camels in the middle of Kansas. So did there you, you say go. camels, as in like something are, I would find in a yeah. desert? Mm -hmm. How does yep. that work? I don't know. They there's like these big Kansas, farms that have like exotic animals, including like zebras and camels. And I saw them randomly when I got lost in Kansas. Wow. I'll yeah. we'll have to Google that. There must be a zoo somewhere in Kansas that you can check out some camels. <laughs> so without further ado, thanks for jumping on Cynthia, who has uh, been the community, you know, kind of leader over there at Line Guard for some time. <clears throat> uh, hopefully everybody's run into Cynthia. Yeah, at one way or another out on the road. She likes to travel around when she's not in sunny Florida. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> how, how are things going, Cynthia? Everything's great. Kids are back at school and Line Guard is doing some awesome stuff. I got a brand new booth with some new colors. So I'm feeling really excited about that. Feeling very snazzy. So yeah, everything's good. Awesome, that's fantastic news. And I and assume we're gonna see you? you and the Line Guard team out and about in the last, you know, stretch here. I call it conference row, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we will definitely be at DattoCon. You'll also see us at um, <coughs> SolarWinds Empower, or sorry, Enable Empower. Um, <laughs> did I just show my age there? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and then let's see, Robin Robin's Producers Club. We'll be hanging out um, also, of course, at IT Nation. So yeah, we got lots going on. Awesome. Very excited to hear uh, that we're going to see you out on the road. Uh, I usually allow whoever's on the live call to jump on because at some point we, we take, you know, just some open, you know, conversation from the people out there. So welcome, everyone. You know, feel free to mute at any time. And I see some familiar faces in there. So over the weekend, we heard some, some news from our friends over at ConnectQuest. And a big congratulation goes out to the team over at uh, y sync and we yeah you know, we know Paul and and team very well. I mean the long long friends in the the little ecosystem here that we all live in the little sandbox. So congratulations to the folks over at y sync They were acquired by ConnectWise. Wow. And this is a uh, payment automation platform uh, for receiving payments. So if you're using uh, ConnectWise Manage or ConnectWise Sell, which is a quoting tool, or if anything, you're just receiving payments into things like QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks or Xero, a couple of different accounting systems out there that are at the top of the food chain. That's what these people do. <clears throat> so uh, I know a lot of people uh, online were like, well, isn't that what Connect Booster does? Yeah, yes, that's exactly right. They, they, they kind of came out of the Australian, New Zealand kind of part of the world. And then those other guys came out of the US and then like they you know, ultimately converged somewhere you know, in between uh, in terms of, you know, who they were servicing. So congratulations to these guys. I can't wait to see Paul and company out here on the U.S. side. I'm sure we'll see him towards the end of the year. Um, they've been working at that for, I think, 10 years. So it's a pretty good journey there. What do you that's, think there, Cynthia? I think that's amazing. I did not catch that over the weekend. So see I am that? now trying to absorb that information. Now you're like, whoa, I came here to learn. I was like, I'm going to look over here. <laughs> yes. You were like, wait a minute, let me check this link out. What's going on? Um, so, you know, uh, again, um, of, you know, of course, the, the back alley, I call it of the internet, the reddits of the world, you know, they get typing and they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> then it just reopens the whole conversation again about who and, you know, who's with who and <clears throat> how things are going. I mean, it just goes to show you that uh, things are still happening, even though the economy is, you know, it's definitely, you know, at least on the U.S. side, a little bit, I think worldwide at this point, it's a little bit on the down, right? It just, you know, but if you have a good business and it lines up properly, then that's great, right? Which, you know, not to beat yeah. a dead horse, no, but there's still a lot really of M&A happening out there on both sides of the aisle, I think. That's super exciting. And I think that's be a, a good addition for ConnectWise as stack. So it's cool. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. Uh, we'd love, you know, so Darren, you know, 
I know you're a big you're a big voice out there sometimes when these types of things happen. By the way, can't wait to see a Datacon in less than six days. He's out there finishing his Chick Fil A. No Chick Fil A today, but uh, give me a minute. Okay, as he's rustling <laughs> around. Lisa, you're over there on the ConnectWise team. How how did this uh, how did this news come down internally? Good, I hope. Oh my God, it was awesome. I I started working with those Ysync guys when I onboarded back in 2016 because they were really doing everything uh, with respect to international and zero yeah. integration. And man, Paul, you know he's like you guys, right? He started as an MSP, built out his business. Uh, needed to have something that integrated with zero better than it did, went off and developed this product, then added in wise pay, you know, so that they could take payments um, direct. And it's just, he's just a great guy, you know? So I'm um, really uh, enthusiastically I mean, happy. I've been on many a trip and many a restaurant and bar with Paul over the years. Salt to the earth guy, great team. <clears throat> if you guys haven't checked out wise sync, now, now a ConnectWise company. Um, check it out. Why Sync? Looks like they have ConnectWise and Datto integration for you guys over on the other side. And then Wise Pay, I think you don't need any. Um, I don't think you need any system. I think it ties right into the accounting system as well. Uh, so it can tie in directly if you don't have something. Um, but this is actually something that allows you to maybe save some some credit card processing rates as well. I know that they're <clears throat> if you were to use Stripe or QuickBooks payment processing, whatever. Um, these guys have been known to save you money on the actual the transaction fees. Um, so definitely take a look. Uh, but very happy to hear that um, you know those guys uh, you know came to a successful exit, right? I know that Paul I think is transitioning to general manager of I guess that department now for ConnectWise. Um, so that's glad to hear that he's sticking around because. Like to see the guy finally. Yeah, now that Australia is open and he can get out, <laughs> it'd be yeah. nice to see him in person. And other news, a uh, couple other things that we that popped out here that's worth mentioning. Um, All right, what surprises are you going to hit me with? I was no, reading no, the wrong no, Reddit threads over the weekend. Oh no, yeah, I know, I know. Reddit is just an interesting place with many interesting <laughs> people. No, I saw this one pop up right. Um, now they think that after all of those laptops that were delayed for months and months and months, that they think PC shipments will start to slow down <clears throat> through the end of 2023. I don't know about that. I mean, I think they're slowing. I th is it a slowdown? They're saying to slow down in terms of orders, right? I know that there's still a backlog of, <clears throat> of, buy of orders from people that are four or six months behind. And we know that Darren is one of those people that, you know, was able to check out people like Carbon Systems, which are alternatives to the Dells and the HPs and the Lenovo's that I'm still hearing are backlogged, um, sometimes a month, sometimes two. Um, and doing, Darren, you have- Doing an order success. right now, George, right now, on one right now. <laughs> I, I, by the way, they, I'm not an official spokesperson for Carbon Systems. I just want to point out there's other avenues, right? Just in case you're stuck. But um, yeah, it looks like they're saying, hey, you know, we think PCs, they always do this up, down, up, down. I know that I was an explosion during 21, 22. Bottom line is, I think laptops and tablets will continue to crush it, especially the low cost Chromebooks and stuff like that. I think that you'll continue to find them in, you know, schools, school use, home use. Um, I, I'm just curious to hear if people are still struggling we know Darren's not struggling because we know where he's getting the stuff from. But anybody else in the call, you guys still having a, any issues? You know, monitors, desktops, laptops, servers still, are they getting a little bit closer to regular ship dates? Or are you still struggling? Uh-oh. Must be still struggling because nobody's saying anything. <laughs> oh, don't, don't feel, feel if you're hesitant to unmute, the, throw it in the chat or the Q&A, but I'd love to understand what everybody's feedback is because I think everybody's struggling with the same with the same story. Um, another quick news story that's come out here again, just you know looking at the speeds and feeds. <clears throat> so augment we met the founder of augment in uh, Comptia Channel Con over in Chicago and um, looks like there's like two or three companies right that are really 
going down this SaaS road. I know the RMMs are, are doing things too. I know Enable just announced something <clears throat> recently as well. But I think it's like Augment, SaaS Alerts, <clears throat> another company called Nuvalux. I'm sure there's other guys out there, but they're the ones that are really channel focused. So basically they're just monitoring things at the cloud level, SaaS level, right? APIs, user logins, you know, basically trying to figure out <clears throat> what's happening in the cloud where you're not monitoring a server or a specific application on a server, even if it's in an Azure, Google, AWS, right? So basically, you know, these guys are releasing tools for like things like Salesforce, Office 365, you know, that, that type of stuff. So, you know, we continue to see people keep on popping up, going down that road. Um, I know that there's a few companies that keep on going down that road, uh, including LionGuard. <clears throat> LionGuard does a lot of SaaS alerting as well. So I think people don't realize, whoops, one second. George, I'll jump in and say that this, is, this has become a very confusing space for, uh, you know, because it, because it does seem like everybody is in it and offering some different level of, you know, monitoring and some will then take certain action and some will do nothing and, it's it's become very hard to distill what is what with this. Like we have a couple of different things in place for it now, and I'm not even sure we need both. And uh, I mean, you know, and it's just a traditional security vendor has now added something else on that looks like it's better, but I'm not sure. So this has become something so, that so Darren, is I'm curious, critical to what, have. What are the things that are most important to you from a <clears throat> is it a monitoring of logins? Is it just you're watching for changes? Like what? What's the like highest one well, yeah, two if, three if, things? Go ahead. It, you know, if an account is like we had one of these products last week alerted us to it seemed like a brute force you know attempt to to get into a mailbox. Now of course it had two FA on, so it was not successful. Um, and in that case, there's nothing that can be done except let us know about it and, and it did but in other cases um if you see a successful login from somewhere that there shouldn't be and then maybe some other action should be taken you know I'm, I, I mean this is more a question for my text to be honest uh, i just know that it's something we're struggling with a bit in terms of what we should have in place and what that product should or should not actually do well so. I'm going to give Cynthia a chance to, to see, you know, this is one of, I think the folk, I think this is one of the focal points of what LionGuard does, right? I mean, they do a lot of things with your platform, but I think, you know, tying all of your apps in and then monitoring for ads move changes and, and, and logins and, and that kind of stuff, right? That's what line. So guard more does. at the configuration level, like we can tell you if 2FA is turned on or not, and we can alert you when something has changed. Now we're not like an RMM where we're constantly monitoring, right? We're taking that snapshot maybe once a day, twice a day, three times a day, depending on how you have things set up. And we're gonna let you know what changed. So if something changes on the DNS, right? Because as they say, it's always the DNS, we can actually show you what changed and what that configuration state was beforehand so that you can actually just get it back to where it needs to be and actually see who changed it too, which a lot of times it wasn't the MSP, it was some third party vendor that came in and changed something. So that's more what LionGuard is about, right? We're pulling in all of that data and then we're helping with that change management. Now you've got a timeline, you know exactly what happened and when and who did it. Okay. So it looks like people are, are kind of tackling this from different angles. Yes. Right? <laughs> um, but I mean, listen, it's only gonna get deeper, right? And I think you know, the, you know, as we continue down, although if you listen to Tyler, uh, my friend from Nord, who was on about a month ago, who said that the CEO of AWS said that only 5% of IT spending globally is in the cloud right now. Can you believe that number? Just 5%. So that means that, <laughs> that, more, that you know, there's 95% there's to go, right? In SaaS. Wow. And, and infrastructure as a service and all those other things that are going to come out. So it's only going to get deeper down this road. And <clears throat> before I get too far, uh, Bruce, who's on the call, had mentioned that um, he has been using these guys for servers. Um, 
So just a different outlet, right? So that you can get servers in case the big guys are just a little too slow. So check out Enfina or Enfina. And uh, looks like they have server storage. Looks like they even have these little nooks, um, which are pretty neat. Uh, so that's just another outlet. And we'll keep on spreading the news, right? To make sure people can get what they need. Because I, I, I just had a server delivered two weeks ago. I ordered in January. Ah. And that, yeah. I was just like, do, do I still need this server? I don't know. <laughs> it took a long time. It was like time. Christmas when it shows up because you probably <laughs> forgot took, that you ordered it. <laughs> I, I almost did. I was like, I almost forgot calling to figure out where the server was because it took so, so long. But um, yeah, so just another place for you guys to get to get servers. And then this one <clears throat> I thought was interesting. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to check this out. So channel company, right? And now it's just kind of like, you know, hey, last, you know, 40, 40 biggest tech deals that had, and this goes back decades, right? That had huge impact in the channel. I thought this was kind of neat as I was perusing through. Uh, again, depends how long you've been in the, in the industry, but like <laughs> we're talking about Microsoft and DOS, right? Uh, I mean, that goes back a few. So you guys should check this out. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, it goes, it goes through 40 of the biggest tech deals. Um, I'm sure we can all remember when a company got acquired by another company, since we're talking about that these days. But um, this goes back all the way to probably before some people were even in the industry. Because I, I still remember DOS, but I was a little bit younger then. And uh, yeah. yeah, I came around in, the, in when Windows actually had a mouse. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Cynthia, since we have you on the line, yes. and I've mm -hmm. gotten, gotten through my news segment here, I'm sure there's okay. other stuff out there. I'll pop it up as it pops on the screen. But um, tell us. What are you hearing from people out on the street? You talk to a lot of MSPs all the time. And uh, are things good, bad, in between? Are you, feel, are you hearing like, are people just stuck and like, that's good enough? Or are they growing? Are they shrinking? What's happening out there? I feel like there's a lot of growth. I feel like there's massive amounts of acquisitions, as you were just talking about. Um, there's still that need of finding good people to hire. I still hear that a lot as a problem. And so as a result, MSPs are really leaning more on their tools and looking at their stack a little bit more, um, the fine tooth comb, you could say, and make sure that they're getting everything that they can out of that to run it as efficiently as possible or, you know, make a change if they need to there. So that's pretty, I think that's pretty like the biggest thing that I keep hearing about. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like, like a lot of growth right now. That's awesome. I feel like <laughs> since the day. I walked into my first IT event until now. This has just been one of the top three or four things that just never, never go away. And it doesn't matter what year, doesn't matter what person, like people just have a hard time finding good people. And I've heard of people being creative, right? When they're finding people, right? Like they do in, they, they jump into like the internship or co-op programs out of mm -hmm. school, you know, at the college level and get, get these guys kind of early while they're still mid you know, mid, you know, kind of degree. And then you, we've also heard of, you know, working with some of the, you know, the entities that do kind of like, instead of going for a college degree, like they train these people how to do, you know, other skills, right. And technology is yes. one of them. Right. And that kind yep. of thing. Um, I heard about a guy too. I think it was Charles Love, but I could be confused. But he was talking about bringing in, they actually bring in like high school kids and teach them about what an MSP is and what these jobs look like. And just for some kids, it'll even understand that that's like an option. They just sort of see that the help desk at a big company and that that's all they think IT can be. And so just sort of broadening their horizons of like, these are the types of jobs that you can have at an IT services yeah. company, which I think is really, really cool. I, I, I find it interesting, right? Because by the way, now we're going to go down to middle school and grade school next watch, but why not? I feel, I feel like, and I've been mentioning this now for a few weeks, that sometimes MSPs know like what their price range is in order because, you know, they understand, you know, the revenue on the books, the contracts that they have. And a lot of the people that, you know, would be more advanced people end up taking really, you know, high paying jobs elsewhere, right? We've even heard of MSPs, you know, having staff leave to people even like Microsoft or Apple or whatever, right? Big, big Amazon, Google. big companies. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like, 
the next couple of years, I think it's going to go the other way, right? We've already heard of Microsoft, Apple, Google, all the big guys. You know, if you've been watching the headlines, they've either been laying people off, they've been doing hiring freezes. Um, there was a server that came out, a uh, server that came out <clears throat> about two weeks ago. I think it was, uh, I forget which mainstream outlet was, was, you know, putting out there. I think it was CBS or one of those guys basically saying that, you know, uh, employers, you know, in the United States that they surveyed plan to either not hire or reduce staff over the next 12 months. So like, I think just like housing prices, you know, you would think, Hey, there's so many technology jobs. This shouldn't be a thing, but I think just like housing prices, there's a, there's a bubble, right? Yeah. <laughs> like can't always go up without coming down. Right. So right. I think that there's going to be very skilled people out there uh, over the next 12, 14, 16, 18 months, whatever it ends up being. Um, you know, Cynthia, I think the challenge when you, when, you know, the market kind of shifts like that is once you have people, how do you retain them? Right. I think that's the other challenge yes. other than finding people is how right. do you keep good people? Because, you know, everybody's just constantly trying to move up, right. In terms of what they can generate in terms of revenue. And sometimes that kind of out breaks outside of what MSPs you know, can offer, right? I, you know, it's hard for an MSP to compete with Amazon. Right. Yeah. As far as like benefits are concerned, you're not going to have the same packages. So then as how do you build that culture? How do you build that loyalty that make people want to stay? And part of it, I think too, is, is making sure that, you know, you are paying a good salary from the beginning because it is, in the long run will cost you less money to pay someone a good salary than to have to continuously onboard people because maybe you aren't. So I think that's one thing that sometimes we just have to change our mindset about. Um, but I think that, yeah, building that culture and that loyalty. And then also it doesn't always have to be someone that had helped us experience, right? If you are at a restaurant, you are checking out somewhere and you're having a great customer experience, you never know that person might be more technically minded than you thought they were, right? Like look outside the box a little bit. You know, we've brought in a lot of teachers at Lion Guard um, because they, they approach problems a different way and they can look at the product and look at educating people about our product in a different way than like a super technical person would. So yeah, definitely think outside the box. Yeah, and I, I think that <clears throat> having that conversation up front, I know that hiring is a, uh science or is it an art? I guess it depends on who you're talking <laughs> I think to. It's both. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's an art. I, I, you know, you can put, you can have as many resume searchers and keyword phrases. And I mean, you know, question is, can you get the right information out of people in a short interaction? Right. Cause how many interviews can you have with somebody? Right. Not 20. Um, nope. but anyway, <laughs> long story short, um, I think that's part of the, I think that's part of the catch, right? To get, you know, ask those hard questions up front, understand what people are looking for. But I think retention is another one that, you know, the, the sandbox has a problem with. Um, and, you know, you constantly see people on the Reddit forums uh, coming out, you know, hey, this is a throwaway account. Uh, my employer, X, Y, Z, right? Um, and, <laughs> you know, I think we'll see that until we all are out of the industry and retired and sitting on a beach somewhere. Uh, but that always comes out, right? I think that there's a balance with um, how much work people are doing, right? And the work-life balance. Yep. It's hard to deal with in the MSP land because you're always on, right? Uh, yes. You're always on call. You're always taking turns doing that, hopefully. Maybe you even have, imagine a day where like you can actually staff for that off-hour shift. That would be, that'd be great. I know not all MSPs can do that. A yep. uh, couple of other and new, go ahead. I was saying, I think too, within the culture, something Ian Doberman told me a long time ago is that he always told his techs, like, listen, at some point you're going to cost me like a thousand to two thousand dollars. You're going to make a mistake that will cost me a lot of money. I've already budgeted for it. It's okay. When the mistake happens, don't try to cover it up. Come talk to me so that we can just make sure that it doesn't happen again. Like, I don't expect perfection. And like having the, the room to breathe like that in your job, no matter what you're doing, I think is so important. Wow. I love that. I wish everybody yeah. said that. I don't know if oh, every yeah. MSP owner thinks that way either. It was, yeah, I was like, we thought it was very, very insightful. Okay. So you had other news. <clears throat> well, I can't help, but, you know, but put out there, cause I know everybody's just marking their calendars for the not for the Darren's of the world, right. They're maybe waiting for Google's fall pixel event. Cause I know he's a big Android guy. Nope. 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 Not gonna maybe not, it's Samsung. Not, not going to compete with the fold buddy. Industry right. leading, state of the art. All right. Sorry. Well, 
Google Google's big event is for their hardware is coming out October 6, 10 a.m. for any of you Google hardware guys. And then of course, like I think as we're at Datacon, um, they're gonna be coming okay. out with the I think the iPhone, the next version of the iPhones and the iPads. Um so I'm sure everybody will be, you know, standing in line in DC because there is a, actually, believe it or not, an Apple store across the street from the convention center. Oh gosh. <laughs> what other shopping is there? Did you see what else there was? I don't well, if you like iPhone. museums, if you like museums, <laughs> plenty of those. Uh, another one that popped up that I was just checking on the feeds. Um, no surprise here, TikTok, oh. right? Yeah, you know, there's all this, you know, there, I mean, even going to the past administration, not trying to get political, they've been talking about TikTok as a, a like a, a, a major security issue for the United States. Um, so apparently there might've been a TikTok breach. We don't know. But I read another article yesterday that said that um, 30% of TikTok staff, like online, right? On LinkedIn and stuff like this, used to work for the Chinese government. I don't know if that tells you anything or not. Uh, did, but, we, uh, did we Snopes that? Is that for sure true? I, 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 I go Google it. I read it on an article. <laughs> I don't, I have to go back and pull it up. So I'm just telling you, I don't know. I, I have not thing. done the TikTok thing. I noticed how TikTok shows up on Instagram feeds. I don't know. I was about saying, did you see the noticed? Instagram news over the weekend? <laughs> no, I what did was actually, Instagram news? Uh, so in Italy, they, um, they just settled for like 46 oh, yeah, million like dollars. hundred million dollars, right? Okay, yeah, like some I re- huge amount of money um, over like how data was used, um, like specifically with teenagers. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, I'm pulling that up right now. Yeah, that was a big I, dollar amount. But I mean, I guess it's Facebook and they have unlimited money, right? Or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's like the third or fourth um, Irish regulatory. Yeah, okay. So this is like, a, this was the exact one I was reading. I think if you go yeah. down further, it's like the third or fourth. Um, I have to do this thing in order to unlock it. But anyway, uh, um, yeah. yeah, well, it, it big, came out of the Europe, European Union, right? So mm-hmm. um. 405 big ones oh see i said 45 i forgot the zero <laughs> yeah 405 big ones. but i think well, with that's the like, other with i feel the like other that's cases, a right it's, off. it's like almost 700 million dollars that they've brought up against instagram over there so very interesting i mean i pulled this one up and then immediately this article pulled up which was only a week ago that um facebook settles suit um, this is a big thing that happened back in 2016 oh, with like, yeah. they were using Facebook data on election stuff. And then like, they got caught doing bad things. So um, yeah, that was only a week ago. <laughs> so sounds like Facebook's just like, you talk about MSP owners saying, Hey, that's all right. I've already budgeted for when you have a bad day. <laughs> that's a <laughs> lot of days. That um, would be a really bad day. <laughs> yeah. 405 million. Yeah. I'm going to shut it down guys. We're going to go, we're going to go do something else. Last one I pulled up uh, for Microsoft. I don't. I mean, I feel like Windows 11's had a really slow adoption. Um, but for the people who are on Windows 11, there is a new version coming out. Uh, so obviously Microsoft's moved into like this multiple build versions per year, you know, kind of like what they used to call service packs. So there's a new one coming out here in October. You should go check out and read the release notes. It's coming. I'm sure most MSPs would say that they tend to wait for everybody else to figure out what's broken or not before they push all their customers there. But then again, if they f- fix something in that in that build, who knows, right? I mean, you'd have to really you'd have to really get into it. But Cynthia, are you on a Mac or a Windows? Mac. Of course. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I shouldn't even ask that question. I knew that. <laughs> I, feel like I knew that answer. <laughs> I do prefer it. I find that they just run more consistently um, with less headaches. Okay. That's All right. My personal journey. No, hey, everybody <laughs> has their own has their own personal thing. Darren, since you're using Samsung, does that mean you're using like a, what are you using for your, your I think you're a Windows guy, yeah? Yeah, of course I'm a Windows guy, yeah. Okay. All right. So are you on Windows and- 10 or Windows 11? Windows 10. Okay. What reason does Windows 11 give me to upgrade? I mean, seriously. (laughs) Well, I think Windows 10 support stops in 2025, but you got time. I got time. I got time. 
No need. All right. So you're no, you're in no rush. Sorry. What no about rush. you, George? Are you Mac or PC? I, I mean, so I'm a PC guy through and through. I do have a, a Mac mini over here just for like, you know, the people who are like, oh, I can't get this to work. And I'm like, uh, what are you using, Mac? And then I go fire it up over there. And I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. It works over here. It's kind of like I just, uh, you know, uh, fail safe, right? For those people okay. that pop up, right? But I'm definitely... I'm definitely a Microsoft guy, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm actually using a Surface Book. I was just talking to our friend Ken Patterson earlier today. He's like, oh, I just got this new Surface laptop. I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, I got the pen. Have you ever used the pen? I'm like, yeah, I got the pen. I was like, I can't tell you how many times. I maybe used a pen like three times. You know, like maybe I needed to like, like sign something. something and I, I was lose. like, oh, let me really quick just use this pen and sign it and save it as a PDF. <laughs> um, but now there's eSign, right? So like, you know, it's not as big a deal. Uh, and like, I remember one other time I used it, I was, um, I was trying to show, I was trying to explain something. I was like, let me draw this for you. Maybe it'll be easier visually. Like pull that Microsoft paint. And I started drawing on the Microsoft paint with it. So very few times that I use a pen. I know Apple came out with the pen for the, I, the, the iPads, right? The iPad pros, you could buy like a, it's like a 200 uh -huh. pen or whatever. I don't know. Do people buy the electronic pens? I feel like you either learn how to type or you stay on, you know, paper and pen, pen, you know what I mean? I think if you're in like certain design industries, it's super, super helpful. Um, for me, it's just like something else I would lose most likely. So I don't see any no. reason for why. Oh, and the pen needs batteries, but, right? So like you keep it in your bag for, and then the one time you need it, like the batteries are dead. Oh, I thought it would like plugs in though, like probably recharge it. Well, maybe the Apple version, because I know you're yeah. Miss Mac over here, but like the, I yeah, am. like the Microsoft version, there's like little batteries inside, like a uh, triple A's or something, or maybe quad A's. And like, Ugh. you gotta, you gotta replace them every once in a while. Yeah. It's just that Bluetooth. Is... Sounds yeah. fun. Well, I, 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 you know, I know that, uh, just because right before I got on, uh, I, I guess somebody else in my family was driving a car that was registered to me, not me. I'll admit when I get pulled over and I gotten a, a warning citation in the mail, right? Because you pass the camera and, you know, it's all automated. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you know, cops, when they print you out a ticket now, I don't know, Cynthia probably never gets tickets, but I, I surely do. When they print, when they, when they print <laughs> out tickets now, because it's not, it's no longer the triple sheet, you know, carbon, whatever, right? They actually, oh, yeah. you know, they you print out the eight and a half by 11, right? They got to like burn more paper, okay? So when they do that, they don't make you sign. They just hand you the, the eight and a half by 11. Remember, yeah. remember, I don't know when the last time you got a ticket, Cynthia, I'd love to hear it, but like when, back in the day, when you got tickets, you used to have to sign them. Yeah, no, I had to sign it. It was like a little, yeah, little carbon thing. They give you the red one. They keep the yellow one. The white one goes to the court or whatever. Yeah. No, it was in 2010. It's the only speaking ticket I've ever gotten. Wow. 2010. What, what was it for? Uh, I was speeding. My son was screaming in the back. I was totally exhausted. I had no charm. I was done with the world. Like he pulled me over. I, I didn't try to be charming. I was just like, yep, I was speeding. Give me my ticket. I got to go. Like, <laughs> yeah. So only yeah. had one ticket. So your insurance rates are doing pretty good, huh? Yes, they are. Thank yeah. you. Now I've been pulled over a couple of other times, but I wasn't in such a bad place and I was able to, you know. Just work your way about, through the situation I yeah hear you know just be friendly and and talk and um and then i just got a warning can i hire you to 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 work my my tsa situations out i mean maybe oh my lord my, my consultant all right <laughs> like... yes they don't have problems with tsa people either George. try smiling <laughs> i got it all i got global entry i got pre-check i got it i mean i got Anyway, I, I was looking at my, I got, to, I got to take a flight over to the UK. I'm splitting. I told you I was splitting a couple of flights up with between me and my other, my other traveling buddy over here. And uh, I was like, it's been a minute since I've been out of the country. I got to go to the UK on one trip and I got to go to Malta on another. And I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, I'm probably going to get stopped in security somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Maybe try like walking with a little bit like jaunt to your step, like you're a happy person, not like you're from Philly looking for a fight. I'm not looking for a fight. I'm usually I dead know, tired at maybe, five o'clock in the morning when we're traveling. Uh, maybe and, some body language, just a little pep I, in your step might help. Oh yeah. And then how about when your, your electronics get flagged? You know what I mean? It's like, Ugh. 
Yeah, I yeah. can turn it on for you. Here you go. Yeah. So you've never been through all of these situations, have you? N- no. Yeah. No. They asked me what was in my big booth, and I said it was my booth, and they let me keep walking. I had like a big one, one of those big, yeah. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You did a carry-on on a booth? Yep, to Australia. Mm-hmm. Not a carry on. It was a no. I checked it, but it was like okay. the like that humongous like eighty pound. Yeah. I was like, how the hell did you? How did you walk through yeah. regular security with a booth? No, 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 no. Just like, but just like walking out of security, like, and they were like, oh, ma'am, what's that? And I was like, oh, it's my booth. I'm in marketing. And they were like, okay, bye. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, customs and border protection. That's that's a whole different animal. Yeah, for sure. You have anything to declare? Mm-mm. How much money do you have? Oh, I don't know. 20 bucks. Uh Did did you know that? So I didn't realize this after. And now I'm thinking about it because I'm going to the UK. Paper money in the UK is expiring. Oh. Yep. You have to go to a bank and trade it in for the newer version or else it's going to invalidate after like October. So they're just doing new paper money or they're Mm -hmm. like, is it? Okay. Oh, so like your, your bills are too old. You have to exchange them in for the newer. Dude, bill. What happens when you find that money under the mattress? I was about to say, like, what happens? Like when you realize like there's some stuff in the back of your sock drawer or something. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I literally was like, what? A, I, I have like maybe a hundred bucks or a hundred pounds that, you know, like I always have emergency cash just in case, you know, bad things happen. It's an old habit, right? Back, back in the George Younger days when there were yes. still pay phones, right? Before yes. cell phones were like everybody had one. My, yes. you know, I was taught keeping keep like fifty cents with you, so just in case you need to use a payphone to call home, right? Mm-hmm. So like, <clears throat> I I extended that to my my adult years with make sure you have enough cash in case like something happens, you lose your wallet and you like need to get somewhere. Yep. You know you have you have you can pay for it, right? So like I would before I did enough traveling, I would literally you can go to the bank and you can order international money, right? I'm like, hey, I need like 200 bucks worth of pounds or Australian dollars or pick Canadian dollars or whatever. And I just realized, oh, my emergency money might not work for me anymore. I have to go trade it in. That's so interesting. I wonder how long you have to like, trade it in. Because like to your point, like if you're, if it's five years until you go back or something, like you've got all this money, that's so strange. Okay, so uh, see, I'm going to date myself here, George. So yes, I always had quarter on me for a payphone, but I also had a calling card that my parents gave me that only called their home phone number. And I had that, I had the number and the sequence and the pin and everything totally memorized. So then wow. no matter where I was, I could call them, even if it was long distance. You couldn't call collect? I mean, I could have, but this was like, you know, AT&T's better rates because it was like a I deferred see. calling card that just like I went see. on the phone bill calling cards that that's that Home takes phone numbers phone bills like this is all like i've totally just dated myself <laughs> no hey i mean <laughs> you know so like you know how it's always cheaper when you get the phone line bundle from the cable company or the you know whatever verizon or frontier uh-huh. or whatever and like you're like i don't need the home phone they're like well if you get it it like lowers your bill right somehow it's like magic so like for the first time uh you know not too long ago you know, the other half's like, we need to get a home phone. I'm like, for what? She's like, well, kids start going to school. We're not going to give them a cell phone. It was toddlers and preschool. I'm like, okay. So like they have to memorize the home phone. And I'm like, okay. I was like, can't they memorize one of the cell phone numbers? She's like, no, you have to go out and get a cordless phone for the home phone line that we're paying for and not using. I'm like, okay. So I went to, I literally went to Best Buy and the guy, you know, I feel like I thought, felt strange buying this cordless phone, but like, <laughs> it's a thing. It's still a thing. I was like, okay. <laughs> What's that? You get an answering machine for it too? Uh, no, no. They have voicemail, right? You know, like that's still a thing. But I was like, wow. I was like, I'm, I'm going to buy a cordless phone and plug it in. Love it. Oh, that's that great. And then, of course, now all, all of the preschools and schools, you have to download the app. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's how they want to communicate with you. No, they never call you. They just send you a message on that. Yep. Or they'll find out your cell phone number and just text you. Yep. So like, you know. just got a home phone. But I got a home phone. We used to have, we used to keep one that was, but it had to be like a hard line. 
so that if a hurricane ever hit, we would actually like have means of communicating with the outside world, calling 911, things like that. Because, you know, if you're without electricity for a week, you may not be able to charge your phone. Um, but yeah, we don't do that anymore. Probably should since I live in Florida. I mean, like I said, it's already built into the the triple, right? So I just plug it right. in. That's so funny. I wonder how many people are getting generators for their homes now. Oh, yeah. If I ever built from scratch again, I'd have one just like in the plans. You know, like whole home generator. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just, you know, I, I just, I'm converting from get, from oil to gas, natural gas. And I was in the middle of thinking about it. I was like, I wonder how much one of these whole home generators costs. Four grand, five grand. I don't know. I have to check it out. But I was like, you know what? When the whole street's down and you're the only one running, that's the day you'll say that that was worth it. Yeah. And that's a big, that's a big consideration for those that, work from home you know like we're fully work from home uh situation so it's imperative that you know i can't tell people well you know my somebody important is down so i mean i bought one for my you know my main one of my main employees because it you know it's that important you know the so other how guys much, got how much uh, did it cost uh about 10k because wow. it's a lot it's a lot you know there's a lot involved this depending on the site and the this, you know, the survey, I mean, the, what has to be done to get the gas where it needs to go and the whole thing. So, yeah. um, you know, I mean, it's, it's done over time, you know, it, it's paid for it's finance essentially. So it's doable, but it's something that, I mean, you know, I can't afford for this person not to be connected. Right. So yeah. the other guys all have, uh, you know, high capacity U S um, you know, power banks, big batteries, so they can run their laptops and hotspots uh, if they're down for, you know, for a day, but anyway. Does that just sort of come with your that. new employee package? Like you get your laptop? And you I, I don't have, it. I don't want, no new employees for me. <laughs> I, it's, it's just part of, yeah, my, my current employees, but um, new employees sound terrible. Um, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Really. George, do you do anything like that for your employees? We've talked about I mean, your Lion Guard before, like, we give you know, everybody how laptop. You... We give. I see, like you, you all get Macs. I assume based on what uh -huh. you're using. I give out these Surface books, which I like. These Microsoft Surface stuff, and I give them the Surface mouse, and docking station, and you know, yeah. You know, and then you, you know, I don't think anybody's asked for the pen, so I never give anybody the pen. But they got everything else. It's a pretty nice setup with like big, pretty big monitors, and like that way yeah. they can pretty much work from wherever. But like the laptop battery is not going to last forever. Right. I never talked to anyone about having a home generator before, but. I mean, I guess sure, it could probably de it depends on like where your employees live too, right? Um, Darren, where are you located? Oh, well, well, this this guy's in Jersey in a very okay. pro, a very yeah. Every time there's, you know, he loses power all you know regularly, or he did, you know. So it was, it was just the reality of where he was. Um, but but just getting a you know a couple hundred dollar, you know, power uh battery that you know they have really good ones now that you can have easily all day for a cell phone running a hotspot and a laptop and that yeah. way at least there's no excuse like oh i can't i can't do anything today I, you know i just so. i just remembered i shared this on instagram it was the funniest thing i shared it yesterday a guy rolls up to this guy roll you know he's he's walking back to his tesla with a gas tank and the guy's like your tesla ran out of gas and he's like, well, no, it's out of power. He's like, so what do, you, what do you do with the gas? He opens up his trunk. He has a gas generator in the trunk of the Tesla so that he could put the gas in the generator and then hook up the charging cable for the Tesla. It's a good range extender. I mean, it works. <laughs> it actually, <laughs> it actually works. I was like, it does. But I was like, like the whole point of the exercise. Well, don't, don't even get started on that topic because the, again, I mean, it's been, so many times the, the the grid in this country is so not capable of anywhere near the power demands that would will will be imposed or are desired to be imposed on it i mean literally it will fail everywhere if if any of these projections are to to come true i mean it's just it's it's comical it's comical it's like well, oh I, but we can just pass I, that I, buck down the road you know the california you, thing just blew well everybody. i know like, I, I was just talking about that this morning like you know like they have to decrease their electricity usage at a certain time in the evening when you know uses are just highest i'm like well, what if you just got home from work and you need to plug in your electric car yeah. which oh, also, they give lots of incentives for electric cars there so like 
what are you like do you have a timer it's like a i mean Christmas but tree. it was just so ironic like, that like the week before they passed this thing saying hey by 2035 we won't sell gas cars in, in california and the green and a week by later the way, they're like please don't plug in your cars we don't have enough power and i'm I like, was the, like this feels like mixed messaging i would feel very frustrated would feel to, very to be frustrated. fair there's a, there is a major heat wave in california now which is there definitely is. trust me it's real but the but where i am in long island in new york you know we have a an ev we put a charger in for my ev there and i all i can tell you is the rate the power there is so expensive i mean it costs it's probably two times what it costs a tank of gas i mean it, it depending on where you are your your oh. cost of electricity which you have no way of really controlling is no. is also stratospheric i mean and so it's like there's so many things that so, so on, along are, this uh, line right um i was uh i think it was three or four days ago right before the holiday kind of kicked off so uh a county a couple counties in colorado the electric company was running this hey we'll give you a free digital thermostat that you can like control with your iphone whatever i don't know if it was like the same one you get from nest but basically the power company was like coming in for free installing these digital electronic thermostats and then you got upgraded for nothing right it was an opt-in and then like during this heat wave last week the electric company then locked all of those thermostats so you could not change the power. I, I have i'm set up for that i mean so i'm in a situation where i never never ever have to use the ac because i have a good breeze and fans and whatnot so Ooh. you know they you you enroll in that program and they give you 50 bucks i'm like sure i'll take the 50 bucks and um i you know but yeah they can they can be they don't lock them well they, i guess they restrict them to a certain minimum like they don't no, turn like your you couldn't turn it up you couldn't turn it down it was just set it was locked it was right 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 so that's yeah that, that's big out here and uh so anyway i mean i i did run the ac for the first time uh this year uh two nights ago just just because it, i'm like ah, why not just for a little bit could you um, imagine cynthia in florida when it's like you know summertime and it's like boiling hot because everybody has air conditioning in florida and then I, like oh by the way the the, temp, the the temperature on your thermostat's locked at 81 yeah that would uh that would be frustrating i keep it at a chilly like 70 in my house all day uh, i think that i think that i think people <laughs> we just take it out. They'd be like, that's okay. I'm going to go to Home Depot and put an analog one back in. Yeah. Yeah. We actually had a fancy digital one at some point and it was, um, it was like tripping our system. So we had to go back to something that was like much more analog. Yeah. Be like, you know what? Let's just go back, back in the day. You know, it was like a little knob. It works. Yes. <laughs> it's good. Don't lock my power out, man. Like those rotary telephones. Yeah. Which by the way, are still around, but so back to the point, Darren, if the electric grid can't handle air conditioning and power charging at the same time for your car, how's everybody supposed to go to electric cars? It's that's, that's not a detail that needs to be discussed, George. That can be, that buck just be passed down the road. You know, another few trillion dollars of investment will take care of that. Solar panels? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Can like how I much? I mean, I think Tesla bought a company called Solar City, right? And I think like you were able to. Then they came out with the home power banks, right? Where you could like put it in your garage, and effectively, it's like another version of a backup generator. It's just like your home mm -hmm. battery. Right? Yeah, I have a friend that you... has one. They love it. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, works. Yeah, I hope it works. Yeah, works great. Yeah, they I mean, actually they send a lot of power back to the like they're not even using as much as they're generating. Of course, it's I very wonder, sunny here in Florida. I wonder how much solar energy it takes to charge a car. I mean, there's a company, George, there's a company you should look at. Well, I mean, I'll send you some links. Uh, there's a company building a car called Aptera. They're out of San Diego. And their whole thing is that the, the car, if left outside, it, it will charge itself enough. Basically, it can, it can self-sustain because it has very advanced solar and it's super efficient, you know, aerodynamically and it's lightweight and the whole thing. And um, it, it will be, if you could park it outside for a couple of hours, it, yep, there you go. And, and they're on, they're actually going to deliver this thing. I mean, it's going to start, I think later this year, early next year. 
Um, cool. so, this looks this looks very concept like. I'm not sure how many people it, are. Gonna it, it does, this. but but no no. But I've been following them. You can definitely. It's they're they're gonna they're gonna actually do it, and it's uh be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, it doesn't work everywhere, but for California, it works well. So what happens so, if it's cloudy outside? Doesn't charge. I mean, it has no. You can you can charge. I'm saying yeah yeah. You can always plug it in, George. Don't be so negative. Oh my gosh, you know? it's so Jetsons. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's super cool. But but they have real they have real money and they have real manufacturing support and they they're gonna they're gonna make it so um, I I'm very and it confident. starts at twenty five nine <laughs> which is great you yeah. don't always see that type of um of yeah they start have different point. battery op you know capacity options and all that but I think for a lot of people at least in the areas that are sunny and you know, out west with Arizona too and you know Nevada I mean that's the kind of thing that can really work well but. Not so much in Philly, George. I don't know. <laughs> oh, George, if you go down sad. towards the bottom, it has this really cool interactive map about like where you live and how much sun you get and then how many miles you drive a day. It's really cool. I mean, okay, also, yeah. I, I think no matter what, I'm going to keep a gas car around for a while. Just just me. Oh, know. yeah. I mean, absolutely. But it's it's certainly. Yeah. I don't think I can get a baseball bag in this, though, y'all. Not good for the... <laughs> See, I told you this thing. I don't think you can use this for regular use. Well, that's why I want a cyber truck. Is like you know they're like it. It's bulletproof glass and this and that. And I'm like it's sweet. You I don't really have to worry like... about foul. I don't have to worry about foul balls. You like, look. It's... You like the look of that cyber truck. I think it's crazy. 20, 2025 is just around the corner. Don't worry. Maybe yeah. you'll get one then. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever deliver this truck. I really don't. <laughs> yeah. I think I just... it looks ugly. Tesla's going to have Tesla's going to have a big reckoning with I mean everybody now is producing really great EVs yeah. I mean from from Kia Hyundai Kia I mean on the high end you've got Porsche and Audi and you've got BMW with their stuff that isn't technologically fantastic com comparison but they're just great well executed cars and Mercedes I mean you know all these people that have their Tesla Model S's that are going to be at a point of replacement that there was no other option when they got them two three four or five years ago now they have all the options and tesla is going to all of a sudden see their brand loyalty uh i yeah be interesting they're they, you know they'll be around but they're not going to be the dominant player that they well that they, they are right, or have published been. all of the blueprints their technology right they said here take it go make cars i mean <laughs> i mean the guy didn't hide it um but I hear you. Everybody is catching up. And I just think that I might stick, stick, you know, as cool as some of them are, right? I know you love that Mustang. And I'm worried about some of these cars, you know, not saying all car manufacturers are created equal, but like Kia, right? And Hyundai, you know, with the 10 year unlimited warranty, whatever. And then you go into the dealer and they're like, oh, yeah, it's covered under warranty, but we're a year out from parts. Like, what do you do for a year with the car that you're paying a more loan on? And it's like sitting in the driveway. Well, then they have to, then they have to give you another car. I mean, that's, I would say, I know, if some, you're... I know somebody right now who said, we can't even bring it in for another month to inspect it. And then after that, we're still going to wait for a year before we can repair it. But not one of their EVs. That would be way too high profile. Not, not an Ionic because that thing, they would give you a new one tomorrow because they don't want What if they don't have be... a new one? Well, then they'll get, you know, they'll make one. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think, I think everybody needs to ask a, a second set of questions before they go buy these cars. And by the way, for, you know, my father-in-law that's in, you know, the auto, like he works, been in auto body industry for his whole career. Like sometimes you cannot get the parts. If you get into like even a fender bender, like you can't get the Tesla parts, for example, for six months. And like your insurance says you got a car rental for 30 days. And after 30 days, it's on you. So it doesn't matter how long it takes for the parts to show up. So just think about that before you go start buying all these cars. You should ask these questions, I think. But anyway, and we went all over the place. Oh Cynthia, my gosh, <laughs> this this car is bizarre, y'all. Like she's gonna buy it. Watch, she's gonna put a deposit on because Darren. I don't know. Like the okay, I drive like a Sequoia because like I'm you know I'm hauling kids and like a gear and stuff around all the time. Like I just keep looking at this, thinking like my car could run over this car. Like. In, in a battle of cars, like my car would just crush this car. That sounds aggressive, but Cynthia. I don't know. I'm not aggressive. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, 
I don't she's know got places to go feel. and kids to move. That's what that's what she's <laughs> saying. She needs room. She needs space. She can't put it on the ceiling. Yeah, it just looks like it's a little two seater too. So like they're not going for the family. No, no, right now. it's 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 a it's a cool. There's some good videos worth watching on that thing. We'll see. All right, all right, all right. I you, thank you for the rabbit hole that you've given me that I'm going to jump down today. Yeah. I'll let you, I'll let you know when mine arrives in a few years. Leave, we'll see. Leave yeah. it, leave okay. it to <laughs> He's gonna find these cool things. I love there. it. I love so, it. So appreciate everyone for hopping on. I just I, at the beginning of this show, we talked about a lot of stuff coming up. So we hope we're gonna see you out on the road. Stay tuned. This podcast will be online a little in a, in a little while. Cynthia, I hope to see you in DC in like I don't know six days. I'm so excited to be hanging out with you at the National Stadium. You know how much I love baseball. And um, please come visit the Lion Guard booth. And if you're there uh, early on Sunday, we're doing some pre-day stuff with Gradient too. So come hang out, come see us. We're always having fun. You'll probably hear me before you see me. And Darren, we'll see you there too, buddy. You got it. Take it Bye. easy, guys. Bye. Thanks for having me, George. You got it.